In this video, I'm gonna be reviewing the Audio-Technica LP60X and talk about how it stacks up to the competition in 2022. So if you've clicked on this video, you're probably in the market for a starter turntable and this one keeps popping up. And I'm here to tell you there is a good reason for that. What makes this turntable so good is the overall value, the fully automatic nature, and the built-in preamp, which eliminates the need for additional audio equipment. The value of this record player is so good. It starts at 129 USD and you can fork over an extra $50 or so and spring for the wireless model, which is still a good deal. And that's the one I'm gonna be reviewing today. Now at its most basic level, this is a solidly built, great sounding record player that should last you a very long time. However, I'm personally not a fan of the design. It's got a retro look in mind and contains round edges, round buttons, and in my opinion, it just looks boxy overall. Another thing that bugs me about the design is the logo overload. They put the logo on the slip mat, on the front, and even on the cartridge itself, just in case you didn't know what turntable you bought. I find it distracting personally, but I kind of have a little bit more minimalistic taste. I much prefer the sleeker look of one of its main competitors, the Sony PSLX310 BT. I think I got that name right. That said, your mileage may vary and this could be exactly what you're looking for. Where I do prefer this turntable in the design realm is in its dust cover and tone arm. The tone arm is a solid metal and feels strong and weighty and the dust cover is clear so you can see the record spin. Lastly, I like how lightweight and small this turntable is. It means it's quite flexible when finding a place for it in your setup. On that note, let's go through the setup process. In my eyes, this is the most flexible starting turntable because it's adaptable, fully automatic, and customizable. In order to actually listen to records, you either need powered speakers or an amp or receiver that powers those speakers. First, plug in the RCA cables into the back of the turntable and flip the switch on the back to line. Then plug in the RCA cables into your amp, receiver, or powered speakers. For those of you just getting started, my recommendation would be to go straight for some powered speakers and skip the amp or receiver. It's gonna be one more link in the chain. It's gonna just gonna make things a little bit more complicated. So I've left some good options for some powered speakers at different price ranges down in the description below. There are a few additional ways to set up this turntable to wring a little bit more quality out of your system, but it's also a bit more complex. First, you could look into getting a phono preamp like the Art DJ Pre 2. This means that the phono box is gonna be generating the sound instead of the preamp that's inside the turntable itself. To set this up, you need to plug in the RCA cables into the phono preamp and then flip the switch on the back of the turntable so it says phono. Then you need another set of RCA cables to plug it in from the phono preamp into some powered speakers. The second and even more complex option is to power your speakers independently. So that means you're gonna need an amp or receiver to power those speakers. So in this setup, you would have your turntable with some RCA cables to the phono box with some RCA cables to the amp or receiver, which would go into the speakers. You see how that's a lot. Yes, it's going to sound better, but for those of you just getting started, you absolutely do not need any of that. So to recap, all you really need is the turntable and some powered speakers. You're gonna plug from the turntable into the powered speakers, flip the switch on the back to line, and you're all set. Okay, so now let's talk about the playback process. As I mentioned earlier, the turntable is fully automatic, so all of the work is done for you. That means when you hit start, the tone arm lifts up and sets itself down on the start of the record. When it's done, it will automatically reset the tone arm so it doesn't hang out in the middle of the record, damaging the stylus. You can also stop playback by hitting the stop button or control the entire process manually by using the up down buttons. If your record spins at 45 RPM, there's a simple button to toggle back and forth between those two settings. All right, now that your record is spinning, how does it sound? Honestly, there's not much to say here in the sound quality department, it's great. It's gonna sound crisper, cleaner, and more full than a digital file in my opinion. Additionally, this turntable is gonna sound light years better than those suitcase style record players you see at Urban Outfitters that are in like the $100 or less range. Those are just kind of cheap and they could possibly damage your records. So this turntable isn't exactly new, but it's 2022 though, and since its intro, there's been some pretty stiff competition emerge in this space. There's the Sony I mentioned earlier, there's the Fluence RT80 range. Now I've only had a chance to directly compare it to the Sony, and I actually made a video about that. You can check it out in one of these corners, but to summarize, 
In the sound quality department, they're pretty much the same. Their differences actually lie in the other features. Speaking of other features, there's some small things I wanted to mention before we wrap this whole thing up. So remember that emphasis on flexibility I mentioned earlier? Well, a part of that is the replaceable stylus needle on the tone arm. You can easily swap this out for a replacement after about a thousand hours of listening or even upgrade it to a different one to easily achieve a new sound signature or quality range. This sets it apart from other turntables in this price bracket. This gives it quite the lifespan if you really only wanna purchase one turntable. Last thing I wanted to mention is Bluetooth. The Bluetooth quality is good. It's not great or anything, and you're gonna lose a lot of the analog benefits if you're playing your music wirelessly, but it's super convenient and easy to set up. And if you only have a Bluetooth speaker or you wanna to listen to wireless headphones from time to time, it really comes in handy. So in the end, how does this player stack up in 2022? The short answer, <laughs> it's quite well. Though competition has come out in force in this space, I still don't think there's a better value record player out there. You don't wanna spend anything less than 100 bucks on a turntable since they're gonna be cheap and probably a waste of money, but you can get away with spending just a tad more and get something that will last you many, many years of quality audio listening. So that's gonna be it for this one. If you have the time, be sure to check out the full review I did on the Sony turntable or the comparison video I made down in the description below. Otherwise, if you found the video valuable, please leave a like and consider subscribing. Thank you so much for watching.